We're looking at graphs of exponential functions. So the parent function for an exponential growth function is when you have a b is greater than 1. So we're looking at the function b to the x, f of x equals b to the x. And so when b is greater than 1, then the graph will rise from left to right. And if you notice the b value here, that is our first point here, 1 comma b. And then the uh, most important point here is 0, 1 here, because anything raised to the 0 power is 1. So for example, if we chose 3 to the x, if we chose that x value to be 0, right, x is 0, anything to the 0 power is 1. That is true for anything that we choose. Then when we have 1 comma b, so when b x is 1, so 3 to the first power, then it'll be 3. So that's why it is always true for 0 and 1 here. Now when we have an exponential decay, that's when b is between 0 and 1. So like a half, 1 fourth, um, 1 seventh, things like that. What's going to happen is the graph is going to fall from left to right. This is still going to be 1 over b, and we still will have 0 over 1. So like in the case that I said, 1 over 7 raised to the x. Then we plug in 0 there. Anything raised to the 0 power is 1, so that is our point here. And then if we raise it to the first power, then that would be 1 seventh. So it would be 1 comma 1 seventh. Now, th these are kind of hard to read. So when you're looking at a graph, it's hard to see what that fraction is just by looking at it. So there's another way that you could figure out what um, what kind of decay is the graph? What is the B value? Now, if I chose 1 7, so I want to flip it so I get a, so it's now in the numerator, the 7 is in the numerator position. So if I raise it to the negative 1, so anything raised to the negative 1, that means it flips the number, right? We take the reciprocal of it, and then that exponent is positive. So 1 7 to the negative 1 is a 7. So if you plug in a negative 1, then we get a positive 7. And so that will be how you can tell what kind of graph it is. So if you see negative 1, 7 as that point, because you can't read this fraction here, that's a little hard to read, then you'll know that the b value is 1 7 to the x power. Okay, and then that's true for any value. It could be 1 fifth, 1, uh, 1 third, 1 half, and so forth. Now for both exponential parent functions, the x-axis is the asymptote. So it means it's um, gonna get closer and closer and closer to that line, but not pass through it in this case. Um, the graph always passes through 0, 1, and 1, comma, b. Uh, the domain is all real numbers, so notice the arrow goes forever to the left, forever to the right, so that domain is all real numbers, same for both. The range, notice here with the asymptote, it's y is greater than zero, so all the values are above that um, x-axis there. So all the y's are positive. So let's try graphing one, just so you can kind of see what it looks like. Um, we have y equals two to the x, and so we have to decide is that a growth or a decay. It's a growth because b, this value here, is greater than one. So b is greater than one, so therefore this is a growth. So let's pick some values. Um, zero is always a nice number, so we'll put it right in the middle. Um, and then uh, at two to the zero power, as I said earlier, is one. So let's draw our x-axis here and our y-axis. And so zero, one, so it's always at this point here. So it's just one of the important points for our exponential graphs. Uh, if we choose one, so 2 to the first power is 2. So 2, if we picked 2, 2 to the second power is 4. So at 2, we're at 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then if we pick 3, 2 to the third power is 8. And 8's up here. Now let's go the other direction. So let's choose negative 1. So 2 to the negative 1, that flips the number, so now it's 1 half. If we raise it to the negative 2, 2 to the negative 2, that's 1 over 2 squared, 
So that would be 1 over 4. So we have a half and a fourth. And then we have to draw our asymptote. There's always the asymptote here. It's not shifted. It's right on that x-axis. And then we finish our curve. So notice the important points, like we mentioned earlier, is 0, 1. And the first point to the right is 1, 2. Let's try graphing a half. So let's plug in some values. Uh, let's plug in 0. I'm going to go this way. 0. So 1 half to the 0 power is 1. 1. So let's graph that. Uh, 0, 1. And then if we plug in 1, 1 half to the first power is just going to be a half. So it's here. Then we plugged in 2. That will be 1 half to the square. Um, and so that's going to be 1 over 4. Now let's go backwards. If we pick negative 1, 1 half to the negative 1, it flips it. So it becomes a 2. Then a negative 2. That would be 1 half to the negative 2, so it flips it, so it's 2 squared or 4. And then if we did negative 3, then that would be 8, right? The 1 half to the negative 3, it flips it, so it becomes 2 to the third, which is 8. So now we can graph it. So negative 1 up 2, uh, negative 2 up to 4, and then negative 3 we're up to 8. And here's our decay. Again, we can tell it's a decay because it's going down from um, left to right. We have 0, 1 here. And then instead of this 1 half here, I'm going to talk about this point, the negative 1, comma, 2. So again, if you see that negative 1, comma, 2, then we know that that's going to be, like if you think about like 1 half to the negative 1, then you know that your b value is going to be a half. 